Hello guys, my name is Glermit and today I'm going to be going over what I think are the Omicrons you should be investing in before any other one. Now some of these Omicrons are later game, some of these Omicrons are earlier game and some of them are middle game. I've picked a assortment of them, some include Territory Wars, some include GAC and some include Territory Battles. Now I tried to keep the list a little bit shorter. As we know guys, there's almost 50 or 50 plus Omicrons right now. So I think the list is around about 15 uh, that you should be applying. So hopefully there is one in this list that you can do. Now, if you want to do ones outside of this list, that's perfectly fine. And we will kind of cover ones that you may want to do anyway later on in the video. Uh, but for the most part, these are the ones you're going to want to prioritize for the best results. So to begin, we've got the Grand Arena Omicron. So the ones I've listed here, and I'll talk about them a little bit here, is going to be Darth Treya. Savage Press, Wampa, Aiden, Third Sister, Starkiller, Ben, Seer, and Darth Malchus. Now, there are lots of Grand Arena Omicrons, and I'm missing lots of them, and I'm sure some of you will be down in the comments telling me how could I forget this one or that one. For example, Qui-Gon, right? But these are the Omicrons that I think are the biggest game changes. Now, Qui-Gon Omicron is fantastic, but again, it's very dependent on if you already have a Padme team, because you don't necessarily want to ruin that early on, for example. Um, so, we'll start with Treya, and we'll say Treya is probably the best Omicron in the game right now. Uh, it's going to be turning the Treya Nihilus team into just a god-tier team. Uh, it's going to be beating so many teams on offense. It's going to be beating Reaver. It's going to be beating Darth Malgus. It's going to be beating teams such as General Skywalker. It's going to be beating teams such as JML as well. Obviously, that's not really um, something to, to cry home about. It's a fantastic achievement for the Treya team. Uh, then we've got Savage, and Savage is <laughs> he's up there as well, right? He can be used on offense, he can be used on defense, um, he can be used to supplement the Treya team, he can be used to supplement the Malgus team, the Darth Revan team, uh, he can be used on defense with Starkiller, he can be used anywhere and is such a good Omicron. For Grand Arena, I'd honestly say there's three Omicrons that every account should have, and for me, they're going to be Treya, Savage, Aiden. I think every other Omicron is, is situational, is a choice, uh, but for the 99% of you, those are the three you should have. If you want to apply another one, which I think is a must-have, is later game in Esreva. Outside of that, you could honestly go about any Omicrons and be perfectly fine, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to be covering a little bit more than just those four. Next we have Wampa, and Wampa is a little bit like Savage, it's a great solo Omicron. The only downside of Wampa is Wampa needs obviously two Zetas to be functioning properly and the other thing is that now people are starting to kind of avoid setting Wampa teams obviously if you're in the low GP brackets this is not really the case you're still going to be sending Wampa in all the time but honestly with how good Savage is I'd prioritize that over Wampa and Wampa can kind of go on the back bench and uh, not to mention Wampa is a harder farm they are a get one farm and that is something that is a little less accessible um, than a squad arena farm <laughs> I mean Savage requires one Zeta and like no gear Wampa requires a little bit of gear get one and two Zetas it's a no-brainer to go for Savage but Wampa is still in here because Wampa is a fantastic character. Uh, the next character on the list obviously is Aiden. I've already mentioned how good Aiden is in this game. I think that Omicron is S tier. I also think it's very important because on characters, and I'll show you guys, on characters where you look at them and um, they have the Omicron on uh, the level 8 tier. That means the Omicron affects the ship's stats. Now, if you want to know what characters are going to have this, it's any newer character since Omicrons were introduced. So having Aiden's Omicron impacts her ship. So there is no reason not to apply this considering how good Aiden's ship is anyways. Fantastic, fantastic Omicron. And for me, the best Omicrons in the game are the ones that are going to be fundamentally changing a team and making a Logia team viable. Aiden is one of the best free-to-play Omicrons. It's one of the best Omicrons, period, um, that you should absolutely apply. Next, we have Reva. We have Third Sister. Like I said, guys, this is one of the later game Omicrons is not one that a lot of you are going to be applying, but if you have Reva, you need this Omicron, and it's not even a question of should you have it, it's a question of you have to have it. And the reason being, without the Omicron, there's too many counters to Third Sister. As soon as you apply this Omicron, all of a sudden Treya starts losing, General Skywalker starts losing, and so forth. If you don't have this, those teams are going to be winning uh, most of the time. So this is a must-have Omicron, but obviously it's a later game one, and I think it's good that we've got a mix of early 
middle and late game Omicrons here. The next one is going to be Starkiller. I think Starkiller, if you have him, this Omicron is a must-have. Um, I think people understand why. You know, his unique makes him a GL tier character, uh, which is obviously why you're going to want it. Um, but obviously, not everyone has Starkiller. So this is why um, I would say he's not the big four Omicrons for GAC. Next, we have Ben, and Ben's kind of in a similar position to Starkiller here, right? Ben, ben is a fantastic character, right? But the only issue is his Omicron that you're going to want to apply is his um, Omicron called Force Diet. And this is going to make him revive uh, throughout the battle. Now, the downside is it requires GL Ray. So if you do not have GL Ray, you do not do Ben's Omicron. And that's why it's not as important as the others. But if you have GL Ray, all of a sudden this becomes a must have. So a bit like Reaver, where these are Omicrons that are must have, they can also become ones that you don't need or just can't access. Do you have the Reaver squad? No, don't apply it. Do you have the uh, uh, GL Ray? Then don't apply it. Obviously Ben has got other Omicrons we can apply, such as Obscured, which is a very nice one. But honestly, I wouldn't really worry about any of these unless you have GL Ray and then all of a sudden this is an Omicron to apply. But if you want to save and be efficient and apply the best, Grand Arena Omicrons, Ben is one of those. Now guys, I have like 27 Omicrons in this game, and I think 21 of them are Grand Arena. There are plenty of people with almost double what I have, but I can tell you now, this has been one of the best Omicrons I've applied, and each and every one in this list, I can vouch for 100%. Next we have Seer Jinder. Uh, Seer is a new Omicron, uh, she's a new character, but I think that because of how free to play friendly the team is turning out to be, I think this is going to be a must have. Uh, so if we have a look at the Omicron, it's going to be fundamentally changing the team, the way the team works. So for example, it's going to be giving foresight, it's going to be giving uh, immunity to dazes, immunity to ability blocks, uh, you're going to be gaining protection up, you're going to be gaining loads of offense boosts and crit damage boosts and all of these fun things. And when you add it all up, up, it makes the team insane. Now, Sierra is going to be, a, she's not farmable as I'm making this video, but she probably will be farmable in the next day or two. And if it's anything like Cow's Farm, it's going to be an early Cantina node or early Hard Node farm. But either way, she's just too good to miss out on, guys. And as an early game player, you should be working towards this team. I spoke about it in a recent video um, about free to play friendly teams and Sears teams on there. And the Omicron only improves that. Now, if you have the Omicron on Sears, you're going to be beating DR, for example, which is a fantastic team to be shooting up on and beating considering DR, Jednet Rev and Malik are early game focused farms that people do in order to get ahead and you can skip that and bypass it and use your Seer team and dominate. Honestly guys this Omicron is insane and the only reason it's not in my like most important Omicrons, in other words Treya, Savage, Aiden and um, possibly Third Sister, you know, we spoke about that before is because it's just so new. Once we have more time and once we look into it more, I'm sure it'll be up there as one of the elite Omicrons in the game. And the final one we're gonna have is Malgus. Now Malgus is, unfortunately for ship purposes, you may have to apply all three, depending on how good his ship is, he may need them. Remember guys, if the Omicron is on the tier eight, they are gonna require the Omicron for the ship stats. But in terms of what you need to apply, the only one you have to have here, guys, is the lead. The lead is going to make him a GL tier character. Now, if you have this, you're going to be dominating Grand Arena. But again, Malgus is just one of those characters that a lot of you don't have. And he, he's fantastic, but he's like Ben, he's like Starkiller, he's like Reaver, where it's just a little bit later game. But these are the ones that I'd recommend you guys go and apply for GAC. Now moving on to the Territory War Omicrons and honestly guys, these ones I would prioritize more and I almost put in more than you can see here. I almost had three lines for Territory War. Now I don't have as many Territory War Omicrons as GAC Omicrons uh, because I obviously stream Grand Arena, right guys? And as someone who streams and I'm sure other people who are content creators can agree on this, uh, it's, it's good for content purposes to apply as many Grand Arena Omicrons as much because you're going to be using them more. But for those of you at home who don't stream and you just play the game, you can get by with a limited amount of Omicrons. There are people in top 50 of Kyber with only five Grand Arena Omicrons. Like you can get there without them. So I would recommend you actually go and apply Territory War Omicrons because they're actually going to give more value. And this is something that Van Sill spoke about on a recent stream uh, where basically they said, hey, look, the Grand Arena meta is always changing. So when you go and apply 
buy an Omicron for Grand Arena, unless it's going to be one of the core ones that I've listed here, most of the time they're going to become outdated over time. An example is First Order Type Pilot. What a fantastic Omicron when it came out but over time it's gradually declined and now it's not really that great. I don't really use it that much. It might be good for you guys, but it's not an elite tier Omicron. Whereas a territory war, the meta does not shift as much. The meta is a lot slower to change. And because of this, you can get more value over time from these Omicrons. So for example, Droidica for me is like an S tier Omicron. I think in terms of the three Omicrons you, could, you should apply for your entire account, Droidica is one of them. I think it's Treya, Droidica, Aiden. I think they are the three best Omicrons in the game right now. Uh, we then have Poggle, and Poggle is one. Honestly, guys, it's pretty good. Uh, in a recent Territory War stream, um, I'll link the exact um, time it happened in the uh, comments, so you can just skip to that. It will take you to my stream, but it will skip to the actual battle. Um, I went up against Poggle Omicron, and I went in with my Treya team, and I got roasted. And, and as far as I knew, Treya should win, and I was very surprised. Uh, so Poggle Omicron is very good. Now, obviously, they did nerf it ever so slightly, and they did make it uh, or prevent it from being used against Galactic Legends. Um, but for the most part, really, really nice Omicron on Poggle. Uh, now, I don't have as many territorial Omicrons as I should have, and guys, as I've said, that's partly due to me applying more Grand Arena. But over the next coming months, I'm going to be mainly going for these territorial war ones, with the exception of Seer, who I think really needs one. Um, so... The, obviously guys Poggle is very good, Droidica is very good, uh, Phasma a very good Omicron in TW and the other thing is guys the Omicrons in TW have a lot higher ceiling. Now obviously some of you may not know about these counters or strategies because Territory War is kept within guilds and not spread towards the wider people. Um, so for example some of you may be see, you know, seeing Poggle on defense all the time. Well Poggle is a good defensive team but the things he can be on offense are even greater. Uh, Phasma. People run Phasma all the time on defense when in reality they kill star killer they can kill other teams in grand arena that, or territory war that are just too good value to ignore so for that reason phasma is in this list then we have boba fett son of Django. again guys another character that a lot of people ignore because he's a little bit lackluster outside of territory war now you can change that with the tuscan chieftain omicron which i could have easily put in this list because it is a very good omicron but it's still not one that can just about make the list it's, it's two newer characters a hard node farm not many if you have Boba Fett, Sion, Django, it's very, very specific in that sense. And because of that, you're probably not going to have it. But if you have the Boba Fett, Sion, Django, Omicron, then you go and apply Tuscan Chieftain. They're like a pair. And this one is going to be the best Lord Vader counter you're going to have. And I know some of you are going to say, but Glermit, what about um, Fennec? Fennec does have her limitations. Okay, Boba Fett, Sion of Django is going to enable you to beat it so, so easily. He's going to enable you to beat other GLs. He's such a good offensive team. And he's a really, really good character in Territory War. It, if, if the aim from CG was to make a character who did well in Territory War and Territory War alone, they succeeded with Boba Fett, Sion of Django. He's a fantastic character in that game mode. Then we have Jahani. Uh, finally, a, a, ter a Territory War Omicron that I actually have and I'm recommending. Um, Jahani's Omicron is the must-have. I would even argue Jahani's Omicron is stronger than Starkiller's Omicron. And that's because Jahani's Omicron in Territory War is going to make Starkiller beat 5 out of the 7 GLs. Now, Starkiller's Omicron is going to make him beat 4 out of the 7 GLs. So the GLs you're going to be beating in Territory War include, but are not limited to, Lord Vader, SLKR, Sith Eternal, JML, Rey. You can beat very weak JMK teams, but I'm not going to count it. And Jabba without Leia can also be beaten with ease. Now, in GAC, this Starkiller Omicron is going to be enabling you to beat Kylo, C, Rey, and JML. And in 3v3, you can beat Lord Vader, but it's a little bit more dicey. So I would say this Omicron is incredibly good. Now, some of you may also be wondering why you can't see Mara Jade. Mara Jade's a fantastic Omicron, but I just don't think it's as good as these ones. And the reason being, and it's something I've always said in the past, if you have fantastic mods, the need for Mara's Omicron goes down. Obviously, it still has value, but by being fast already, you're not really gaining as much from the bonus turn at the beginning. It's still really, really good, though. 
and and he should be on this list really so if you want Mara Jade go and apply that as well and the benefit of Jahani Omicron is if you have Mara Jade Omicron you don't have to use them together I, I see a lot of people running Mara Jade Omicron Jahani Omicron together with Starkiller when in reality you can run Palpatine Mara Jade Omicron separately and then you can run Jahani Omicron with leftover Sif and, and you know Star Killer in there as well because the majority of the value is through the unaligned force users in this team Next we have Embo Omicron. This one's a little bit like the ones earlier where it's a little bit dependent on your team at hand Now the Embo Omicron is fantastic with Jabba uh, Outside of that, it's still good. I mean I beat Raze with this Omicron, but it's not the one you necessarily want to be applying But it still makes this list because of how fundamentally it's going to change that Jabba team Fantastic Omicron, 100% recommend. Next we have two Omicrons combined Now if you apply one of these you apply the other one and they're gonna be Ahsoka Fulcrum and Cal Kestis. These are two fantastic Omicrons. Unfortunately, Ahsoka's one is the higher priority because you can use her to solo. Cal's one is going to allow her in a team. Now, if you have Ray, if you have Seer, these are must have S tier Omicrons. If you have either of those, this team is insane. If you don't, prioritize Ahsoka and then do Cal later, but you're not going to regret this, guys. Remember, Territory War, you're going to get longer value. Don't think short term, guys. In terms of short term, Grand Arena. In terms of long term, and being able to use the Omicron with effect for longer. G, uh, territory was the way to go just think of it this way grand arena how many omicrons did you apply a year ago that you don't use now whereas territory war how many omicrons did you apply a year ago that you still use now and the answer is probably all of them next we have the uh, grand inquisitor right grand inquisitor has two omicrons on this list and they are going to be uh, the special ready to die and this one basically kills off any GL counter because you're going to be insta killing the enemy Jedi. Next, we have his lead, and his lead is also incredibly good. So he needs two Omicrons, it's expensive, but if you have him, you should be working towards them, and it's going to make him an elite tier character. Also, with just his special and his lead, he's going to be beating JNK Cat in Territory War with relative ease. So there's a reason to do it just for that. It makes him one of the best offensive teams in the game, and for that reason, you can't ignore these Omicrons. And then we have the final section of this list and they are the TB Omicrons. Now I couldn't not include these. I wanted to include Raid and Conquest but I just think they're lower priority than this. Uh, but Finn's Omicron, Rollo's Omicron, both of them are elite tier and are going to allow you to cope in both Light Side Geo and also in ROTE. Now some of you may be saying oh but Rise of Empire is, is really easy early you know, in the first two sectors and that's true it is easier but as you progress it becomes harder and the platoons and the missions and all of that start to take into account for example in the first sector you're not really platooning any gls or major characters in the second you're going to be platooning all your gls so you may not have ray you may not have jml you may not have jmk you may not have cat you may not have jed Knight luke or jml so at that point how do you help your guild and it's these two Omicrons here because they're going to be autoing almost every wave you try. And for that reason, they have to be in this list. Now, if you are someone who doesn't like TB, don't apply these, obviously. But they still make this list because they are the two best for their game mode. Now, big shout outs to some Omicrons that are missed on this list. And we're going to go over a couple for each game mode. So for GAC, Dash has been left out. I think Dash is very close to being on this list. Um, it's just, he's very dependent on Vandal Chewie. And if you don't have Vandal Chewy, you don't have to apply Dash Omicron. Uh, the next one is going to be Tuscan Chieftain. I think they could have easily made this list, but they're just too new and, and not as accessible. And that's the reason they're not on this list. Then we have for Territory War, Mara Jade. Mara Jade should honestly be on this list. She's such a good character. Uh, but again, guys, I just don't feel like she's as good as these ones. Like I said, guys, Omicrons for me that are the best Omicrons in the game are ones that fundamentally change a team and turn a bad team into a good team and then for tb there's two that you could apply if you wanted or really three honestly none of the tb ones are terrible for what they do and they're gonna be the car formicron if you do rise of empire only if you don't do rise of empire don't apply that one but if you do and especially with the hut cartel raid currently and um well crate raids sorry you do you do benefit from investing in like relic five six seven old republic because they will benefit you long term and that omicron becomes good then but the two really that i'm going to recommend other than these two is going to be Kyle's one and it's going to be Cassian's one. Now Cassian's one is very strong and you benefit from having the Rogue One team done. So you're going to be able to use it. And uh, now guys, some of you may be wondering why I didn't put Ad Radisson here. 
I think Adradis is very good, but I see a lot of people just not apply it, you know? Uh, unless you're going for Profundity, you probably don't even have the team. Um, and again, Jin could have been in this one, but again, it's situational. You may not have the team. Anyways, guys, let me know down in the comments. Did you agree or disagree with this list? Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel a bunch. And as always, guys, I hope you all have a glowing day.